Hello, welcome to our last video on list pages. Today we're going to review a few items that we can do within the list pages as well as I'm going to show you how we can add totals within our list pages in Dynamics 365. So I'm going to come over to the navigation pane. I've already I'm going to come to favorites and I've selected, uh, for example, budget analysis. I've added it to my favorites by selecting the star next to it, which makes it very easy, it takes me straight to the budget analysis page. So I'm going to filter for a specific financial dimension to make it a little bit easier. And we are going to use, oh, perfect, budget analysis, department division, object class, fund, sub fund, and project. Uh, column sets, expense budget, posting layer is current, as well as the current tax year. And I would like to display segments in separate columns. So once I do that, I am going to select calculate balances on the bottom left here. Once those balances have calculated, you'll see we have our list page, our column titles are at the very top. If I select above a column, I can right click. And again, this secondary box populates with different options, which I can, can do within the list pages. Uh, but first, I would like to show you down here on the bottom left, we have this total. If I select that, and expand it. As you can see, I very quickly get the column totals. It's a very nice visual uh, that I can see um, how each of these columns total out. Uh, I would like to reiterate that we are in a training environment, so please do not pay close attention to the values within those columns since we are in a training environment. Uh, the nice thing that we do have in Dynamics 365, uh, which we do not currently have in DAX 2012, is once I start to add filters, for example, Department 22, excuse me, select apply, let's say object class 01, apply, and as that, as the data updates within my you know different filtering you can see that the totals also update to reflect the current values uh, again that's a very nice feature it is not something that we currently have in, in dax 2012 so that's a very nice uh, as you add filters uh, release filters these um, these numbers uh, for your column totals will update accordingly so let's go ahead and release these filters. Another way uh, which we can do that is I can come up above a column and I can right click and one of the options is show footer, which as I show a footer, as you can see, this nice footer came. I have these little plus signs underneath the column. I can also come up here to the very top and I can select total this column. And as you can see, I selected total this column and it's very quickly, uh, depending on how many rows you might have, it, it could take uh, a little bit of time. I can also hit this plus button and select it. And again, I can total that way. So two different ways, uh, either by selecting the plus or I can come to the top of a column and uh, where it says hide total, since I've already totaled the column, it would say, uh, total this column. Uh, if I do not want to see it, I can select this X. As again, you can see it went back to a plus sign. Um, again, I can just come over here and select plus and it totals it. I can also come to the very top and I can select hide footer. So if I don't need to see it, uh, I can minimize it. And if I would like to see it, I can. Uh, so for the next example, let's kind of, I'm going to narrow down some of our data. 
So we're going to select department, let's say 22 and 50 and select apply, select apply again. So as we discussed in, in one of the previous videos, I can come up to, let's say example, object class, and I can right click and I can group my data based on that column, which I'm going to do. And if you see, you know, it separates it and I have this gray bar here at the top. Uh, if I come over here and I want to total, again, it will calculate that data for me. And as you can see, once those columns have totaled, it also adds this total here for you uh, as far as the grouping. So you kind of get, you get these subtotals based on the grouping, which is very nice. Um, again, I can just come down here and hit these pluses. And again, based on the object class grouping in these, uh, Subtotals, I can get them here in this kind of kind of hard to see, but the this little gray bar right here, which is very nice. So I can get the overall totals based on the columns, but then I can also get these subtotals based on my grouping, which is very nice. Uh, so I will you will ungroup on that. Additionally, we can come and right click and we can export all rows. As you can see, export to Excel, select download. And here you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, I can open my Excel spreadsheet. So this is nice. Uh, I will say uh, if you do apply a grouping or a total at the bottom of your columns, those do not carry over to Microsoft Excel. As you can see, those totals are not there. You will need to retotal once you're in Excel. Additionally, as I stated in the prior video, any drive that is mapped to your computer, I can select File, Save As, and I can save my Excel spreadsheet to, to any drive that's been um, mapped to my drive. Additionally, we'll go for our se second example. I will show you, we'll go to outstanding encumbrances. So I'm going to go up to the top search bar. And as I begin typing, you can see outstanding encumbrances. I'm going to use the same financial dimension set as I did in budget analysis. My document type, I'd like to keep it as both. I would like to include carry forward documents and just to kind of Again, narrow down my data. I am going to pick the month of May. Go back to May 31st. And then once I have my selection prepared, I select calculate balances. And once again, uh, you get what looks like a list page. However, the difference between outstanding encumbrances and budget analysis is this is an inquiry. So it is a little different than a list page. Uh, if I come above a, you know, I can still sort, I can still filter on the different columns. Um, if I right click my options or export those rows to Microsoft Excel, or I can show the footer. So again, I can come here, I can show footer, I get the plus signs. I can then add those totals to the bottom of my columns. And as you can see, once I select the plus button, uh, sometimes depending on the amount of data you have in your columns or in your inquiry, this could take, take a little bit of time. Uh, however, as I selected the plus, as you can see, it adds these uh, totals to your columns. If I don't want to see them, I can select the X, or again, I can come up to the very top, right click, and then select hide footer. As you can see with my inquiry, it gives me the full financial dimension. If I would like to separate out that dimension for, let's say, sorting or filtering purposes, I can come over here where it says display segments in separate columns. 
and I can turn that switch to yes. And as you can see, it has now broken down that financial dimension into individual columns. So if I needed to sort or filter based on a certain portion of that dimension, I now can do that. If I don't need to, I can just unselect that, it turns it back to no, and then I just get the full view of the, the full financial dimension. Again, just like I can in the list pages, I can export all rows, I can come up here to Excel and select download, and in the bottom right, as you can see, I get that notification that it's been downloaded. Additionally, if I'd like, I can come over here to the Microsoft icon and do the same thing by selecting it, export to Excel. Uh, I personally like the uh, top of the column. I feel like it is less steps, um, but just as you can with your list pages, you can export that data to Excel. So that's it for today's video. Not a lot of uh, items to cover. However, I hope you are enjoying these videos. And if you have any ideas on future videos, please let the Project Elevate team know. Thank you.